Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right. Go F yourself. And happy Friday. In this episode, I want to address a very, very common question that I get all the time. And I've seen other people get in. It's, it's very common in the industry, in the fitness industry in general, and that is, can you gain muscle and lose fat? at the same time? Well, the answer is that depends. I know I say that a lot, but it, it, it's pretty true. It depends, and let me explain why it depends. Let's say you're a, just a straight up beginner, and you're starting a bodybuilding program, and you're in a caloric deficit, but you're holding a substantial amount of body weight, or a, a decent enough amount of body weight, and of course your body is reacting to new training stimuli and all of that and your diet is for the first time in your life sort of in check and and perhaps you know cleaned up a bit not as many processed foods and junk and you're paying more attention to your protein your carbohydrates and your fat intake and your overall caloric consumption yes you very well will gain muscle while burning fat um, but that kind of thing is going to taper off as you become intermediate and as you become advanced, it may be completely non-existent. Now, another situation where that kind of thing can happen where you can in fact gain muscle while losing fat is if you are very overweight to begin with. Um, you will likely see a bit of a recomp happening until your body fat begins to come down to a level where it's a little more reasonable, like around the 20% and lower range and as you tank in below that, you'll notice that the recomping effect will probably cease. Now, there are situ other situations where you can hit a recomp like that uh, in a caloric deficit, straight caloric deficit with training, and that is taking anabolic steroids, of course. Um, that, can, that can help, and this is where the whole concept of growing into a show um, comes into play. You'll often hear people like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Kevin Lavrone used to talk about it as well, and they would say that they would grow into a show. Well, they were using drugs to help maintain their muscle mass as they worked their way into a bodybuilding competition. Those drugs did indeed help them recomp, so they would gain some muscle. Now, now let's say you're, you're somebody who's an intermediate to advanced lifter, and you're in a caloric deficit, and your goal here is to, uh, is to burn fat, but your training is in check, your sleep is in check, and your diet is in check uh, for your goals. The body is never in a really stagnant state. That means that even in a calorie deficit, you are adding fat to your body, but the, the thing is, is the turnover rate, the loss rate due to the caloric deficit, and depending on how extreme the calorie deficit is, the amount of fat you add to your body in a calorie deficit uh, is, is not going to exceed the amount that you're burning. So it's going to turn over at a faster rate than it's able to collect. And the same thing can be said about muscle. And um, likely it will also be turning over because as you're uh, in a calorie deficit, you're not really in a, in a space to be adding weight. Um, this is where the whole mutual exclusivity comes into play. Uh, generally speaking, that is, if you want to gain weight, you eat a calorie surplus. If you want to lose weight, you eat a calorie deficit. If you want to maintain, obviously, you eat a maintenance diet. And your weight will just sort of balance out and you can maintain where you're at. Um, but it's not to say that it's not possible that you might, if everything's in check, even as an advanced intermediate lifter, add a little bit of muscle, but it's going to be so inconsequential, especially as a natural, that you really probably won't notice it. Like three to five pounds at most over the course of like 12 to uh, to 16 weeks or so. You know, so it's, it's really not a substantial amount of muscle gain. Now, there are some diets out there that claim that you can uh, for instance, lean gains, which is a form of intermittent fasting, and there is a lean gains recomp program where on your training days, which are recommended to be three or four a week, I think Martin says, Martin Burkhan, the creator of the program, recommends three days a week, but there are people who do it at four successfully. You eat in a slight surplus. Um, that's basically 20% over your maintenance. And then on the days that you're resting, uh, where you're not you know, lifting at all, you're just recovering, you eat at a 20% deficit below maintenance. And that diet, due to the... Uh, 
caloric cycling, depending on your training or rest days, um, has has helped some people slowly. It's a very slow process. Uh, whittle away fat while adding some muscle mass. So that's really a nutshell. And pardon me if, if this is a, a little bit hard to follow. I'm very, it's very late. I've finished training and I'm tired. But the general rule is, is that if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter, you probably won't add any. And if you do, it's going to be a very inconsequential amount um, because you need a surplus to add weight and you need a deficit to lose weight, fat or muscle, although you don't want to be losing muscle. Um, but if you're a beginner or you're heavily overweight, you may see a noticeable recomp occur, even in a calorie deficit. And if you're on drugs, of course, you likely will see a, um, a noticeable recomp occur as well. So that's really why I said in the beginning that it depends. And I hope that's, uh, that's answered any questions you may have. If um, you have any further questions or need some clarification or want to discuss this anymore, please leave comments below. Otherwise, I will see you on our Meatless Monday episode coming up in a couple days. Have a good weekend and stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. See you then.